Thanks, Anya. Um, <clears throat> I want to make sure the, uh, the video link is uh, set up. Ahmed Masood, can, uh, can you hear and see us? Hello, Mr. Zakaria. Yes, I can see you. And uh, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to have you on. Um, let me begin by asking you, give us a sense of the state of the military operation that you are organizing. How many fighters do you have? Where are they? What, what is the scope of your military activity right now? Thank you. Well, uh, to answer that question, of course, I have to be careful with uh, some of the information regarding uh, the forces that we are currently having uh, due to the security and due to the, the confidentiality of the matter. Uh, after numerous times that we tried to uh, talk to the Taliban, negotiate with them, trying to find a way to make them realize that they need to focus on internal uh, recognition before external recognition and trying to talk to the Afghan people, they outright rejected it. And because of that and because of the brutality and everything which is following and then everyone knows about that, the resistance has started currently. We are fighting the way that we fought in the time of the Soviets and guerrilla warfare tactic, and we are in thousands. But unfortunately, due to the lack of support and lack of logistics, it's going slow, but surely it has started already. So what I have heard is you have about 5,000 fighters. They're mostly in the Panjshir Valley, um, and you do not control any territory. So, so far, it looks a, like um, it's a pretty tough uh, uphill battle for you. Of course. Uh, unfortunately, what has happened, not just uh, in the past two years, but in the past 20 years, uh, not just what uh, uh, the previous government of Afghanistan has done and how uh, conducted itself and uh, controlled and managed the situation, but also our international partners and friends, how they dealt with the situation and uh, uh, from negotiation to withdrawal. Uh, unfortunately, the situation is very dire. Uh, probably this is the first time in the recent history of the world that terrorist groups is uh, currently controlling uh, uh, a geography the size of France, which is Afghanistan, uh, of course. And uh, as we are speaking uh, right now, Afghanistan is an ungoverned uh, space, and uh, it just uh, uh, many groups of uh, terrorists under the blanket of the safety of the Taliban, they are uh, uh, working and they are active. But what is your what is your strategy to take control? Can you take control of territory? in the Panjshir Valley. You compared this to the struggle during the Soviet era. When your father was leading that, uh, that struggle, the Panjshir Valley never fell to the Soviets. Right now, the Taliban does largely control it. Well, of course, and uh, just, just to, uh, to make it clear, even in the time of the Soviets, the Soviets managed to get inside Panjshir Valley. They were there for uh, many years, but they never managed to actually capture the people and capture the soul and the heart of people of Afghanistan, and especially the people in Panjshir and the surrounding area at that time. Uh, as we are speaking, uh, the resistance is not only uh, in Panjshir Valley, but actually in the past two years. Due to the expansion of the Taliban's brutality and their extremism, the resistance have increased to Badakhshan, to Tahar, and to different provinces across Afghanistan, because the Taliban brutality uh, also expanded. Our strategy is uh, uh, very clear. We have said it many times. We do not believe that Afghanistan holds a military solution. Our effort in the struggle is a moral duty that as part of the whole uh, society of Afghanistan and the uh, Afghanistan people that we are trying to fight against the tyranny and totalitarianism of the Taliban. However, we strongly believe the current situation that unfortunately the world is on a wait and watch situation. It is our moral duty as the citizen of Afghanistan to fight for what we believe is right for our country and our freedom. And we believe that in Afghanistan in the past 50 years, many governments, they came and go, but it is the people of Afghanistan who has always been so, uh, successful. 
And we are sure and we are very much uh, optimistic that Taliban will also fade away and they will go away and the people will be successful. Uh, unfortunately, we feel uh, betrayed. We feel left alone. But uh, uh, we, we have each other and the people of Afghanistan, uh, I can say categorically, especially in the recent days, they showed that when it comes to dealing with the Taliban, engaging with the Taliban, even whitewashing the crimes of the Taliban, uh, the people of Afghanistan are united and standing together. And this is our position. But unfortunately, of course, uh, we are empty handed. Why do you think, uh, Mr. Masood, why do you think the Americans, after 20 years, and hundreds of thousands of troops were not able to succeed in Afghanistan? Well, this is something that uh, uh, um, I believe uh, they should answer. But uh, uh, personally, I have also my opinion in this regard. I believe that from the very uh, beginning, there has been some uh, um, mistaken strategy or wrong strategy, which was being uh, adopted to, to, you know, to, 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 to work in Afghanistan or to have in Afghanistan uh, from building the government, the building the army that was uh, a copy of the American army with complete lack of the resources and the aerial support and many other things which ignored the Afghanistan's uh, geography, Afghanistan uh, social uh, structure and Afghanistan history. And because of many mistakes like that, uh, I believe that uh, a strategic partner that could be uh, sort of uh, um, uh, to, to, to create an Afghanistan tour, to have a strategic sub uh, partner in Afghanistan, uh, they like that. Besides and uh, having the wrong strategies and the wrong tactics and fighting against the terrorism. Of course, let's not forget that while Afghanistan was a hot spot, uh, the Iraq was another place which completely diverted the attention. Just the way that as we are speaking right now, the attention of the world as the, you know, the, the beginning of this uh, session, uh, the madam uh, very well said that unfortunately, once again, the attention from Afghanistan has been diverted to Ukraine and different areas. So this is another reason that after the Iraq, the attention from Afghanistan diverted to Iraq and they forgot uh, uh, to some scale in Afghanistan uh, and downplayed the situation in Afghanistan, which caused to this catastrophe that we see today. So uh, w the question I was asking it, another way of asking it is why not why did the Americans fail, but why is the Taliban succeeded? And to me, the analogy with Ukraine is interesting because, of course, in Ukraine, what you have is Ukrainians fighting in gr large numbers yep. with extraordinary bravery and heroism, uh, and all they are getting is Western material support. In yes. the case, for the last 20 years, in Afghanistan, uh, there were American soldiers, there were soldiers from uh, other U European and NATO countries. One, one can't help but wondering whether there were as many Afghans who wanted to fight against the Taliban as there are Ukrainians who want to fight against the Russians. And is that part of the problem, that the Taliban does have some substantial base of support in Afghanistan, particularly among the Pashtun, who are, of course, uh, the single largest ethnic group in, in Afghanistan. In other words, there is a, there is a reality to the, uh, to the Taliban's base that you cannot deny. Well, in this regard, let's not forget that the war against the terrorism and the Taliban did not start after the 9-11. This is one of the uh, misconceptions and one of the things that always uh, are being mistaken. That's, War in Afghanistan started after 2001. No. The war against the Taliban started ways before that. The people of Afghanistan stood against the Taliban with empty hand. Commander Ahmad Shah Masood, my late father, he fought against the Taliban with empty hand and managed to actually bring a strategic uh, a stop to the Taliban's advances across the country to the point that the Taliban were ready to talk and slowly, slowly to come to the terms of uh, accepting uh, an inclusive government. Unfortunately, uh, one of the things was never listening to him. Another thing was that even adapting strategies for Afghanistan, even negotiating with the Taliban and also withdrawal from Afghanistan, our friends, especially in America, they never listened to the Afghan side and to, the, to their partners in Afghanistan. One of the things was they never listened to, 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 to my father when he mentioned about the situation in Afghanistan, how dire and serious it was. 
However, his solution was never for boots on the ground. It was exactly as you mentioned, that we are ready and we are going to fight and we are willing to fight for a country, for freedom and for a dignified life in a government. However, the support that currently uh, Ukraine is receiving, they, they never received you know, back in the days. And the strategy of boots on the ground was something that he was against it. And he thought that it is going to be a wrong policy and a strategy. And we believed in that. Unfortunately, we saw the result of that. However, one thing let's not forget. One of the remarks that you had that Afghans, they didn't have the uh, sort of the bravery of the Ukrainian for fighting against the Taliban. Afghanistan armed forces are probably the only group in Afghanistan that truly gave everything they had in fighting against the terrorism. Let's not forget, by the presence of NATO in Afghanistan, Afghanistan was not fighting only against the Taliban, but we were fighting against international terrorism, which they, many even maybe countries, they were using them against the NATO's presence in Afghanistan. So the bravery of soldiers and the people of Afghanistan, it is very well uh, uh, proven. Right now, even after the Taliban, uh, after the collapse of Afghanistan government and the Taliban's takeover, you see that the people of Afghanistan would complete like an empty hand. They're still fighting in the mountains of Hindu Kush and each corner of Afghanistan. The women of Afghanistan, let's not forget that in the hardest situation, they're standing against the Taliban. But unfortunately, one thing is that always the policies and the strategy regarding Afghanistan was, uh, was being shaped uh, by the uh, benefits uh, of, 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 of course, the, you know, the world powers, but not the people of Afghanistan. Otherwise, we showed the bravery and still the people of Afghanistan are standing tall to fight, but they're all alone, unfortunately. Um, let's talk about the, the women in Afghanistan, because there are some... Uh, women's groups and other democratic groups that are trying to resist uh, the Taliban and yes. uh, in, in various ways force them to moderate either policies or create a more inclusive government. Are you in contact with those groups? Are you trying to work together? You know, you putting some kind of military pressure on them, they putting some kind of political pressure on the Taliban? Well, the thing is that we, since the very first day, we have been always one thing about the current resistance. When I speak of resistance, uh, I'm not speaking only about myself or only about the military resistance, but the resistance against uh, the terrorism in Afghanistan, it has been uh, uh, by different groups and different methods. And one of the major one was uh, the women of Afghanistan from the very first day they stood against the tyranny and against extremism. Unfortunately, they have been completely overlooked when there was uh, uh, talks in Doha and uh, also the Doha agreement, which is something which is a complete different matter and subject. However, uh, they stood and they were uh, speaking their voices and we started you know, to supporting them, to be you know, with them in any front that they were fighting. Unfortunately, one of the thing is that the Taliban's behavior, they conducted themselves in a way that they dealt with the women's protests in the most brutal way. That uh, in some cases, when I spoke personally with the women who went to the street, with their tears, they mentioned that they were actually were hopeful or they were praying for them to be dead than to alive because of the Taliban did so horrible things to them that they are wishing to be dead than to be alive. However, all their message was that please continue and take uh, basically a revenge from the Taliban. The women are in a very critical situation as we are speaking. And the, as Afghanistan right now, it's not governed by a constitution, by a government. It's uh, being governed by a, 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 a sect of uh, a decrees or a group of decrees or a bunch of decrees. And this is the reality of Afghanistan. And every day which is going forward, these decrees are becoming more ethnocentric. It's becoming more religious centric and also it's uh, creating the gender apartheid. Do you think that the crucial error uh, the United States made at the end was the deal that the Trump administration made with the Taliban uh, in return for no attacks on Americans uh, agreeing to draw down American troops, the, the deal that Mike Pompeo uh, signed with the Taliban in, the, in Doha? 
let's uh, go back a little back in the history uh, than just to deal with the Taliban. In my opinion, after the 2001 and the intervention in Afghanistan, there was a great deal of success in building a new government and also in joint combination and cooperation of the regional countries without basically the boots on the ground. And this was very effective in we saw the effort, the joint effort of the regional countries of, uh, around Afghanistan and the United States and the West and NATO. The success was very immediate and it was very rapid. However, later, slowly, slowly, this tension between the regional country and the presence of NATO and the policies uh, and the strategy of fighting the Taliban, and of course, the war in Iraq, many uh, uh, steps like that, it created a lot of problem and issues that you know, uh, arose. Later, slowly, slowly, after starting of the talking with the Taliban, one of the things that many politicians of Afghanistan, including myself, in many events, we shared our concerns with our friends in America that what you are doing, this talking with the Taliban, it is going to destroy every achievement of the past 20 uh, years and past two decades. If you are willing to leave and withdraw, just do it. No one invited you and no one is basically as, as, as stopping. This is your decision. We respect that. However, by talking to the Taliban, the negotiation, which was completely uh, no, flawed, and we shared, uh, we uh, raised our voice and we talked about it with them time after time that this is going to demoralize the soldiers and this is going to be the end of our government which unfortunately was ignored. And then the withdrawal. All of it, it was being happening without the consultation or without basically the participation of the people of Afghanistan, in even the government of Afghanistan, and it resulted to the chaos that we see today. So therefore, it is, I believe, both the uh, Afghanistan government and also the Americans, they are at fault for, for the current situation that we are at. Uh, because of this, uh, I, I, I just don't say just the negotiation was uh, was uh, at fault, but actually this the whole process from talking to the Taliban, the way fighting against the Taliban, to uh, withdrawal from Afghanistan, all of it was catastrophic. I finally, I, I noticed in your uh, in your uh, in your biography that you studied war studies at King's College in London. Yeah. I'm wondering. What is the biggest difference between studying a war and waging war, in your view, now that you've had a chance to do both? Well, it's, uh, it's, it's very different. Of course, uh, uh, one day of being in the battlefield, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's like 1,000 universities. And nowhere in the books, what you read and what you find is going to help you in the actual war. This is something that uh, I believe... Uh, it might uh, make you know the war and, the, you know, the, and why the wars happen, but of course, uh, 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 how to, 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 to deal with it and how to manage it is a completely different uh, story. Ahmed Masood, thank you for being on. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me.